wrestling entertainment boss Vince McMahon stepping aside while his company investigates him for alleged misconduct. New allegations have emerged involving WWE billionaire CEO Vince McMahon. The WWE board released a statement this morning that the company is looking into a potential $3 million hush money settlement over an alleged affair McMahon had with an employee. More publicity, quite frankly, be it good or bad, that we get increases viewership. So a lot of the negative publicity, you know, that we achieve is okay with me. In July 2022, Vince McMahon, the CEO of the WWE, announced his retirement at the age of 77 years old. This came as a surprise to many as McMahon had been at the helm of the WWE for nearly 40 years and was considered a driving force behind the company's success. However, it was revealed that McMahon had stepped down due to an investigation into the allegations of assault, harassment, and sexual misconduct. And it was also reported that McMahon had paid over $10 million in hush money to multiple women over the course of a decade. So McMahon's retirement was not a voluntary move, but no, rather a response to the investigation and the allegations against him. His daughter Stephanie McMahon took over as the interim CEO of the WWE following his departure. So at the time of his retirement, Stephanie was the acting CEO of the WWE. Vince McMahon is an iconic figure in the world of professional wrestling. He is the chairman of one of the largest and most successful entertainment companies in the world, the WWE. He has been a driving force in the wrestling industry for decades, transforming it from a regional pastime into a global phenomenon. But that doesn't mean that McMahon hasn't been a controversial figure, with accusations of steroid use, sexual harassment, the exploitation of wrestlers, but his impact on the industry and the entertainment world cannot be denied. There is more to Vince McMahon than just wrestling. He is a visionary, he is a businessman and a cultural icon. McMahon is a trailblazer and his influence can be felt in every corner of wrestling and honestly in entertainment as well. Vince McMahon was born in August 1945 in Pinehurst, North Carolina. His father, Vince McMahon Sr., was a wrestling promoter in the Northeastern United States and McMahon was introduced to the wrestling industry at a young age, and Vince wouldn't meet his father until he was 12 years old. His father ran the Capital Wrestling Corporation, CWC, which later became the World Wide Wrestling Federation and then eventually renamed to the World Wrestling Federation and is now known as the WWE. In the beginning, McMahon just wanted to be a wrestler, however, he was not allowed, so instead had his hopes on becoming a promoter just like his father. McMahon stated, I loved wrestling from the day I first saw it, the characters, but my dad was pragmatic. He remembered the bad years he'd had and say, get a government job so you can have a pension. McMahon would often go with his father to wrestling events and would do things like help set up the ring. The wrestling business was quite literally in his blood. McMahon graduated from university with a degree in business administration in 1968, and after college, he began working with his father's company, the CWC. This is where he learned the ropes of the wrestling business. McMahon started out his career as a commentator and would try out different things. He tried to be a ring announcer, a referee, and even a wrestler. But during the 1970s, McMahon became a prominent figure in his father's company. Despite his early success in the wrestling business, McMahon knew that he wanted more. So in the early 1980s, McMahon had a vision of expanding his father's business. He wanted to transform it into mainstream entertainment for a national audience. So in 1982, McMahon purchased a promotion from his father and began to implement his vision. Shortly thereafter, McMahon's father passed away and he rebranded the WWWF to the WWF and set his sights on signing top talent. Before the WWE was this global empire that it is today, it started off with a humble beginning just as a regional promotion that ran shows in the northeastern United States. So how did Vince McMahon change his landscape of the small wrestling promotion? Well, McMahon transformed the wrestling industry through his innovative marketing strategies and his larger than life characters. He created new stars like Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and The Rock who became household names and helped attract new fans to the industry and to the WWF. McMahon's vision for the company was to make it national and then a global brand, with wrestlers who were larger than life and storylines that were more dramatic and engaging than anything we had seen before. 
And he took risks such as expanding into new markets and developing new revenue streams such as pay-per-view events and merchandise sales to help make the WWF a financial success. He then would develop new forms of entertainment such as Monday Night Raw and SmackDown which were weekly shows that brought wrestling into people's homes on a weekly basis. And this was only possible after the death of his father as his father didn't want the business to expand globally. 1983 was when the WWE parted ways with the National Wrestling Alliance, the NWA, an organization that linked all the wrestling territories in America. This decision was a gamble to say the least, but it definitely paid off in the long run. By offering wrestlers like Hulk Hogan, Bobby Heenan, and Mean Gene Oakland more money and exposure, McMahon was able to establish the WWE as a major player in the wrestling world. As a result of McMahon's aggressive recruitment tactics and the collapse of other companies, he became a controversial figure in the wrestling world. Many people in the wrestling community saw McMahon as a greedy businessman who was more interested in making money than preserving the integrity of the sport. After acquiring stars from the AWA, McMahon built his company around Hogan, and once Hogan's popularity exploded, the rest was history. McMahon capitalized on it by launching Wrestlemania. In 1985, the WWF launched a pay-per-view event that would become the largest wrestling pay-per-view event on circuit TV. WrestleMania is an annual event that would become the Super Bowl of wrestling, but back then it was a financial risk that thankfully paid off. Hulk Hogan became a pop culture icon and dominated the wrestling world for the next decade and a lot of it was because of WrestleMania 1, the risk that Vince took and also by positioning celebrities such as Mr. T with Hogan, everything just went up from there. As time went on in the early 90s Hulk Hogan's popularity did begin to decline mainly due to the rise of younger stars like Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart and another factor was the fans becoming tired with the cartoon-ish over the top wrestling that defined the industry in the 80s. Hogan essentially became outdated but in the mid 1990s the WWE then WWF faced stiff competition from rival promotion WCW which began to outperform the WWE in the ratings. Both shows aired on Monday nights which led to fierce rivalry between the two promotions known as the Monday Night Wars. To compete, the WWE decided to target a more mature audience and move away from the family friendly content of the mid and early 1990s, thus leading to the creation of the Attitude Era. During this time the company incorporated adult oriented content into their programming which helped them achieve record high ratings and record high pay per view buys. Vince McMahon who had played the character of Miss McMahon was a prominent figure on TV and he had a famous rivalry with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Austin was a top star in the McMahon company and played the character of a rebellious anti-hero which resonated with a lot of fans and McMahon played the villainous boss and their feud is regarded as one of the best ever. As the content became more mature, this era also saw the rise of stars like The Rock and Triple H and Mankind and the introduction of raunchy female characters like Sable just helped the company become bigger than ever. Despite criticism for the way women were portrayed, the era was a huge success and helped the company gain mainstream Hollywood exposure with Sable signing a deal with Playboy magazine and in 2001 after a long Monday Night War, McMahon purchased WCW effectively ending the war. bought my competition. That's right, I own WCW. This purchase cemented the WWE's place as the most dominant and biggest wrestling promotion in the world. In 2002, the WWE, then known as the World Wrestling Federation, officially lost a lawsuit by the World Wildlife Foundation over the trademark for the acronym WWF. This meant that the company that Vince had spent so long building had to change its name, and on May 6, 2002, the company was officially changed to World Wrestling Entertainment. World wrestling Entertainment. Get the F out. Thanks. With a rebrand underway the following month on an episode of Raw, Vince officially named the new era of the company the Ruthless Aggression Era. The company didn't entirely eliminate everything they built during the Monday Night Wars in this era, there was still all the same levels of violence and raunchy content, they just focused on the wrestling element a little bit more than they did in the mid 90s. This new era saw the end of The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin, but we were introduced to newer characters such as Brock Lesnar, Randy Orton, Batista, and John Cena, and this was also a very exciting time for Triple H, Vince's future son-in-law. McMahon has faced several controversies and legal battles throughout his career. In 1992, Rita Chatterton, the first female referee in the WWE, accused Vince McMahon of sexual harassment. 
Chatterton claimed the Big Mad had made several unwanted advances towards her and retaliated against her when she refused the advances. She claimed the McMahon had propositioned her with sex to get a higher paying contract in 1986. By 1992, the statute of limitations had run out and charges were never right. filed. Next thing I know, Vince McMahon is unzipping his pants. I was pretty shocked at that point. I, you know, I mean, we're talking profession here and, and suddenly he wants more than just profession. At the time, this wasn't even the biggest scandal the company was facing, therefore it received, you know, little attention. One of the most significant was a steroid scandal of the 1990s, in which McMahon was accused of distributing steroids to his wrestlers and encouraging the use. The federal government were investigating these allegations and it led to the indictment of McMahon on charges of distributing steroids to wrestlers. The trial was highly publicized and featured testimony from several wrestlers who admitted to using steroids. Hulk Hogan was one of the wrestlers who admitted to using steroids and he confirmed that he picked them directly from the headquarters of the company and even at WWF events. However, Hogan claimed that McMahon never directly provided him with steroids. Fellow wrestler Kevin Wackles also testified against McMahon, but his testimony against McMahon did not lead to a conviction because the prosecution was unable to provide sufficient evidence to support the allegations of steroid distribution. The defense argued that the wrestlers had been coerced into testifying and that there was no direct evidence linking McMahon to the distribution of steroids. While Wackles and his testimony and the testimony of other wrestlers helped increase the awareness of steroid use in wrestling, it did not result in a conviction for McMahon. However, it damaged his reputation and led to increased scrutiny of the wrestling industry and the use of performance enhancing drugs. After the scandal, the company was forced to implement a new drug testing policies amongst their wrestlers. Any wrestlers who would fail these tests would be suspended or fired for using steroids. Today, the WWE has even stricter policies in place for when it comes to drug testing and they make sure the health and safety of their wrestlers is a priority. McMahon has also faced accusations of sexual harassment and the exploitation of workers. In June of 2022, the Wall Street Journal released an article stating that the WWE board was looking into Vince McMahon for allegedly paying a former employee a secret $3 million settlement for an alleged affair. They also confirmed that they were looking into the misconduct by head of WWE's talent relations, John Laurinaitis. After this information was released to the public, Vince publicly stepped down as CEO while the investigation was taking place and named his daughter, Stephanie McMahon, as interim CEO. Which was interesting because Stephanie had just recently announced that she was taking a leave of absence. WWE and the board of directors today announced that a special committee of the board is conducting an investigation into the alleged misconduct by its chairman and CEO Vincent McMahon and John Laurinaitis, head of talent relations, and that effective immediately, McMahon has voluntarily stepped back from his responsibilities as CEO and chairman of the board until the conclusion of the investigations. A statement from WWE. Then in July, the Wall Street Journal released another article claiming that Vince had paid an additional $12 million in hush money to four other women who worked for the WWE over the last two decades. Shockingly, Vince would then announce on Twitter that he was retiring and that his daughters Stephanie McMahon and Nick Khan would be the WWE co-CEOs effective immediately. Is the legacy of Vince McMahon forever tarnished through the hush money scandal of 2022? Despite the controversies, McMahon's impact on the wrestling industry and the entertainment world is undeniable. He transformed wrestling from a regional pastime into a global phenomenon and created some of the most iconic characters and storylines in entertainment. He also pioneered fresh marketing strategies and revenue streams that have helped make the WWE one of the most successful entertainment companies in the world. Vince McMahon's legacy is complex and controversial, but his impact on the wrestling industry and entertainment world cannot be denied. While he has faced several controversies and legal battles throughout his career, his contributions to the industry and his innovative marketing strategies and revenue streams will be remembered for years to come. Should McMahon's career be glamorized after these kind of accusations, or is it right to separate the art from the artist? McMahon returned to the WWE in early 2023 with rumors of a sale, and on April 3rd, 2023, Endeavor announced that it would be purchasing the WWE for an estimated $9.3 billion. The WWE and UFC, which is also owned by Endeavor, will be merging to form a $21 billion global live sports and entertainment company. Endeavor now has a 51% controlling interest, and the remaining 49% is spread across the shareholders of the WWE. McMahon has also been re-elected as executive chairman, and only time will tell on what sort of legacy McMahon will leave behind when it's all truly said and done.